listening to Coffee and Conversation with Recovery Advocate Network, the nonprofit organization that strives to address the staggering disparity in resource availability for individuals suffering from mental health disorders, processing disorders, addictions, trauma healing, and sexual identity challenges. Together, we strive to end the stigma associated with these challenges so that true healing can begin. Welcome back to Coffee and Conversations Between the Lines Blog Club series. This is episode number 66, where actress Patricia Ray will read author Joshua Young's blog post entitled Navigating the Storm from Anger to Healing. Patricia was born in New York City and first studied acting at the prestigious Lee Strasberg Theater Institute in New York at the age of 19. Her first feature film role was in the cult classic Swim Fan, and her first major supporting role was in the Oscar-nominated film Maria Full of Grace, as well as appearing in The Big Wedding alongside Robert De Niro and Diane Keaton. She has appeared in many TV shows, including NCSI Los Angeles, Blue Bloods, Law and & Order, and The Mentalist, to name a few. But her first long, reoccurring role was as Judge Abigail Delgado on the CBS TV series All Rise. Patricia also hosts a podcast of her own called Believe This, where she and her co-hosts debate hot topic issues from their different perspectives. You can listen to Believe This on any major podcast platform. You can learn more about Patricia in the show notes. Between the Lines episodes are written by author guests who prefer to use their written voice instead of their interview voice to share their stories and thoughts. As a reminder, the views expressed in any blog are the views of the author, and the purpose is to provide a safe place for the author's voice to be heard. So what are we waiting for? Fill up your coffee, sit back, relax, and let's get started. From Anger to Healing Written by Joshua Young Read by Patricia Ray Anger, often misunderstood and maligned, has been a constant companion on my journey through mental health struggles. It's a powerful emotion capable of consuming us from the inside out, yet it's also a signpost pointing us towards deep-seated pain and unresolved issues. For me, anger was a smoldering fire stoked by 16 months of sexual abuse at the age of 13, depression, and ultimately, alcoholism. It remained mostly internal, a silent scream against the injustices of my past. But with alcohol, that anger found its voice, loud and uncontrollable, a manifestation of all the hurt I had bottled up inside. My teenage years were marred by sexual abuse, a time when vulnerability was met with betrayal. The aftermath left me with deep scars, not physical, but emotional and psychological. Depression was an inevitable visitor, a cloud that hovered persistently, covering my worlds in shades of gray. Alcohol became my refuge, a way to numb the pain, to forget the memories that haunted me. But it also freed my anger, gave it wings, allowing it to erupt in ways I could never predict. It was a vicious cycle, one that I felt powerless to escape. The roots of my anger were deep, fed by a sense of injustice and a feeling of helplessness. I was angry at my abuser, at the power they had over me, at the innocence they stole. I was angry at the silence, at the isolation that came from holding my truth inside, from feeling like I had to bear my burden alone. And even as I moved into sobriety, stepping into the light of openness and honesty about my past, Anger remained a shadow, ever-present, ready to rise at the slightest provocation. 
Dealing with this anger has been a central part of my healing journey. It's a process, one that requires patience, understanding, and a willingness to confront the darkest parts of myself. Therapy has been a lifeline, a space where I can unravel the threads of my anger, tracing them back to their origins. It's there that I've learned the importance of acknowledging my anger, of seeing it not as my enemy, but as a part of me that needs healing. Communication, too, has been crucial. In the past, my anger turned inward, a silent force that chipped away at my self-esteem and sense of worth. But by opening up, by sharing my experiences and my feelings, I found a way to release the pressure that builds up inside. Talking about my anger, expressing it in words, helps to diminish its power, makes it more manageable. It's in these moments of vulnerability that I've found strength, discovering a community of support that I never knew existed. One of the most transformative aspects of dealing with my anger has been learning to forgive. This doesn't mean forgetting or excusing what was done to me, but rather letting go of the hold that these experiences have over my life. Forgiveness, in this sense, is an act of liberation, a way to free myself from the chains of the past. It's a journey and not an easy one, but it's essential for healing. Forgiveness has allowed me to reclaim my power, to move forward without the weight of anger and resentment holding me back. Mindfulness and meditation have also been key tools in my arsenal against anger. These practices help me to stay present, to recognize the signs of rising anger and address them before they overwhelm me. Through mindfulness, I've learned to observe my emotions without judgment, to accept them and let them pass. It's a way of detaching from the intensity of the moment, of finding a calm center in the midst of the storm. Physical activity is another outlet for my anger. Exercise, whether it's running, yoga, or just a walk in the park, helps to channel my energy into something positive. It's a way to release the tension that builds up, to clear my mind and find a sense of balance. The endorphins released during physical activity are a natural mood booster, helping to combat the depression that often accompanies my anger. Creativity has been an unexpected tool in dealing with my anger. Writing has provided a way to express my feelings, to give voice to the pain and the healing process. This creative outlet allows me to transform my anger into something beautiful, something that speaks to the resilience of the human spirit. It's a reminder that even in our darkest moments, there's hope, there's a possibility for change. My journey through anger to healing is ongoing. There are days when the anger feels overwhelming, when it seems like the progress I've made is slipping away. But I've learned that healing is not a linear process. It's full of setbacks and breakthroughs, moments of despair, and moments of profound insight. Each step forward, no matter how small, is a victory, a sign that I am moving towards a place of peace and acceptance. In sharing my story, I hope to reach others who are struggling with their own battles with anger and mental health. You are not alone. Your feelings are valid, and there is a path forward, one that leads to healing and wholeness. It requires courage to face our demons, to open up about our pain. But in that vulnerability lies our greatest strength. Together, we can navigate the storm, finding our way to calmer seas. Thank you for joining us today with your coffee and conversation. 
We hope you've been encouraged and learned something from today's story. To learn more about today's guest, please check out our show notes for more details. Now it's time to remember to like this episode, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to ensure you do not miss future episodes. Recovery Advocate Network envisions a world where individuals with mental health challenges receive comprehensive and effective treatment without the worry of financial burdens to themselves or their families, all without the stigmas often present in society. We are proud that every individual work with RAN does so on a 100% volunteer basis. You can support the mission by making a financial donation via PayPal or Venmo, or email donate at recoveryadvocatenetwork.org if you would like to donate items for our next fundraising auction. Please visit our website at www.recoveryadvocatenetwork.org to learn more. Now, stay in the loop about upcoming events, future episodes, and more by following us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter X, TikTok, LinkedIn, and all major podcast platforms. As a reminder, the experiences and advice expressed in this episode are the host and guest's own personal stories and do not represent the opinions of any organization mentioned. RAN is passionate about opening the doors for all voices and experiences, not just those expressed in any particular podcast. If you want to share your experiences or expertise, we encourage you to be a future guest by emailing us at podcast at recoveryadvocatenetwork.org or submit a blog by emailing blog at recoveryadvocatenetwork.org. We also encourage you to comment on the episode so that we can continue to provide content that is most beneficial to the community. How do you do that? Visit our website at www.recoveryadvocatenetwork.org and in the top right corner, click that comment button and comment. So listeners, what do you need to do? Pause what you're doing, subscribe, follow us. Please give us a like and a five-star rating write some meaningful comments, and most importantly, share these episodes with your friends. You never know whose heart you will touch, so please be a part of a reason someone has new hope today. If this episode was triggering to you, we encourage you to contact your support system, therapist, national and community support groups, the Global Crisis Text Line by texting 741-741, and or if in the U.S., dialing 988 to reach the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. If you're in the U.S. and need additional resources such as shelter, support group resources, transportation, food, and or a safe, confidential path out of physical or emotional domestic abuse, please call 211 or visit www.211info.org for assistance. Now, we know you are very busy and we are grateful that you said yes to sharing time with us today. If you stuck to our three C's of engagement and listened to the full episode, then visit the podcast section of our website and leave the comment about the podcast and you'll be entered to win an autographed copy of one of the books from one of our book club series, as well as a coffee and conversation coffee mug. So thanks again. Until next time, back to your coffee.